What's up, Droogie? This week we're getting a taste of the old ultra violent with the Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. English show as hell seen better days. Cause up in this crooked ass future, the government got everybody by the nuts and young thugs ruling the streets doing violent deeds on the reg. And there ain't no gang rolling rougher than Alex and his droogies Dim, Georgie, and Pete. One night after sipping some of that crunk stuff at the Corova Milk Bar, Alex and his boys hit the streets to get their fix of sweet violence. After whooping up some strangers, looting a store, and boosting a car, Alex and the crew swing through the boonies when they stop at a cottage, mask up, bust in, brutalize the husband, and rape his woman while he watch. Damn, B, that's some f***ed up shit right here. Later, them droogies start flexing like they be questioning Alex's authority. But when Alex whips out his shank, he puts them bitches back in their place. Cold-blooded. That night, they decide to step up their game by robbing some rich old hag's crib. Alex sneak in and knock that bitch out, but not before the 5-0 be closing in. Just as Alex is about to bail, Dim pops Alex in his grill, leaving him to get got by the fuzz. Now, 15-year-old Alex got his ass tossed in the clink. Damn. After Alex smacks up one of his cellmates real good, he gets picked to be a lab rat for some shit called the Ludovico Technique. Basically, a bunch of government scientists pump his ass with drugs, make him watch videos of real messed up shit, and condition him to get sick as a dog whenever he think of something violent or sexual. Thing is, these videos sometimes bump in classical music, which be the only thing that mean a damn thing to him. Now he can't listen to his jam without losing his yarbles. Since he rehabilitated, Alex gets released to the outside. While Alex lurk around the streets, he keeps getting his ass kicked by people who recognize him from his gangbanging days. Just when shit's getting rough, the law breaks up the scuffle. But turns out, one of these bads waving crackers is dim. The hell? After getting straight f up by some back then hustlers, Alex stumbles to a cottage begging for help. Turns out, Alex now chilling with the same brother whose ass he beat and whose wife he raped. Luckily, he don't recognize Alex at first. Instead, he just want to use Alex as a poster boy for his posse of anti-government blowhards. But just like the government, they just gonna put the hurt on Alex for their own ends. So they lock him up in a room, start banging some classical music, and Alex try to snuff it. But since that was a little bitch fall, Alex ends up a hype. Actually, he better than I. He been cured of the Ludovico technique. After a while, Alex gets to thinking, realize how empty his life be, and decide he gonna stop thugging ultraviolet and makes himself a one lady man. Man, this ending sucks. Go watch the movie. Now your bitch ass might be thinking, the hell this got to do with oranges? Well peep this sucker, the book's title spitting game by trying to take something organic like an orange and trying to make it work like a machine, which is exactly what everybody trying to do to Alex, not just the scientists. And if Alex can't choose between good and evil, then he ain't a human being, he's just a clockwork orange. Matter of fact, Alex's name got a built in fuck you to all those people telling them how he got a roll. The name Alexander mean defender of man. And in Alice's case, he's fighting for humanity's right to choose, even if they choosing to do some twisted things. Look, even though the state trying to do some good by using a jacked up Ludovico technique, they ain't just ridding the world of evil, they also killing the good. Like one of them government puppets say, The limitation is always difficult. The world is one. Life is one. The sweetest and most heavenly of activities partake in some measure of violence. The act of love, for instance. Music, for instance. See, problem is, culture's always thinking in black and white. Something's either good or it's evil. But on the real, it's never that simple. Nothing's ever completely good or completely evil. But no matter how many damn times some ballin' artists or philosophers spit that truth, we just can't seem to understand it. Humanity gonna think they got everything all figured out, only to bone up and do it over and over again. Like clockwork, player. So start your re-education by hitting that subscribe button, partner. Very well, my literary OGs. Thank you.